everybody. Welcome to the Comedy Cellar Nightly Show. My name is Dave Jessica. I'm here with Mike Suarez, and we are here to show you a good time in New York City at the Comedy <laughs> Cellar. Not technically at the Comedy Cellar, but you know damn well what I'm talking about. A little Comedy Cellar action behind us. It's going to be a fun day. When I, Mike, when I look up at the camera, I'm looking straight at everybody, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's like when I look down, I can see my, I'm like, wait, I'm never looking at the camera. That's because I'm looking at myself looking down. Hello, everybody. Hello, Marcy. Hello, Scruffy Bones. People here early. Love it. And on time, quality show for you today, obviously. Do you realize that if you were at the Comedy Cellar right now, if you were on McDougal Street, you'd be able to see my new best friend who we're going to have on the show uh, next time we're in studio after the high holidays, uh, <laughs> Maddie Weiner. Mike, do you like her? I don't think I've but, met her. I put you on the spot, but uh, like, oh, she's a horrible comic. No, I just met her when I did my show, and she was terrific. And you know, she's new, and they're giving her a lot of spots. And I was just like, oh, here we go, you know. And uh, but she was terrific and really <laughs> nice person, and definitely want to talk to her in studio uh, when we can. So she'll Great. be there tonight with my new favorite comedian, Danny Natterman. <laughs> now I know he's an old favorite comedian. But the fact of the matter is, is that last Saturday, I guess it was the Saturday before. No, it was last Saturday. Last Saturday. Or was it the Saturday before? I don't know, it was Saturday up. before, but it's okay. You, you oh, guys I told everybody how great he was? Yeah. Oh. I'm just still, I'm still in amazement. I still want to, I want to help that guy. <laughs> he just needs to be discovered because uh, he really is terrific, especially somebody who's also terrific is in our Vegas room. This week, which is Tom Cotter, mm. who's very funny, great guy. And, you know, there's just nothing funnier than, I mean, unless you are him, but he certainly took it with a grain of salt and gets it. Um, his performance on America's Got Talent is just absolutely legendary. And he mentions it all the time. You know, when you lose to a dog act, there's nothing funnier than that, unless it was Dave Juskow losing to a dog act, because that's what we want to see. But, <laughs> man i'll never forget that i will never forget that i was pressing the button i'm rooting for him i'm rooting for you know i'm going like i'm tom cotter tom cotter came down to him and the alante dogs that's right i remember and then all of a sudden the alante dogs uh, uh, come out and the dog this is the final and the dog comes out with uh he's in a fire truck with sunglasses and he's holding his arm out the window you know like you do if you're on a, like a going down the highway, listening to some tunes, you know, and I was like, that's it. This contest is over. <laughs> this dog act is going to, I totally forgot about Tom for like, I'm like, oh no, wait, right, right. And uh, as soon as that dog came out in that fire truck, it was over for Tom and he knew it and the audience knew it. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's one of those things where you kind of want to make fun of it. You want to call him that day and you want to be like, dude, that was hilarious. But you just aren't taking into consideration his feelings. Um, I did that. Unfortunately, I only figured that out the hard way with somebody who got fired from a show and I was making fun of it for some reason, like an asshole, but I wasn't doing it to be mean. And um, I guess I left a message on his answering machine and his mother was really angry at me and I just didn't think about it the right way. So it's really good. Now it's been so many years. It's okay. And he mentions it on stage all the time and we talk about it, but yeah, one of those things which was, you know, so horrible at the time. And then uh, years later, you can see the comedy, just like what happened to me on Star Search, which nobody will ever see. So <laughs> anyway, uh, nice to see a week late. Um, as you all know, last night uh, was a tragedy here in the tri-state area. Um, I've never been more excited about a Jets, New York Jets season in my whole life, in my life, except for one time in 1999. I'm going to obviously talk a lot more about this in the podcast. But, well, let's just, I mean, let's just get into it. I'll show you. I mean, Mike, can you just show the first picture? I mean, this is what happened yesterday. There was a humongous thunderstorm, humongous lightning and thunder. And, uh, you know, you were just like, uh, this is going to be awful. And then all of a sudden, a beautiful rainbow comes out. In fact, from what I've heard, it's a double rainbow, the rarest of all things. So you're like, are you kidding me? 
on September 11th, there's a beautiful rainbow after a lightning storm, and Aaron Rodgers is going to take the field. Hi, Catalina. Hi, Mike. As a New York Jet for the first time. And then the second picture, Mike, within 30 seconds, it's all uh, – oh, this – right. Oh, my God. It's September 11th. The guy comes out with an American flag. It's one of the greatest moments or should have been in New York Jets history with – if the season – had gone the way we were all expecting to go, this would have been one of the greatest moments they would have had on every highlight. Aaron Rodgers coming out as a New York Jet with the American flag on September 11th, 22 years later. And then the next picture is tragedy. I mean, it's almost it's September 11th all over again. Uh, <laughs> you... Uh, <laughs> if you look at tragedies in different ways, for some reason, it seems like it's just getting sacked, which, of course, is bad when you're 39 in football. Uh, and then the next picture, it, we couldn't even believe it. I was sitting at the bar and we're like, what? He's just kidding. He's just taking a breather. And uh, it's over. He's out for the whole season. <laughs> it's a joke. And the reason it's a joke is because I was at the stadium in 1999 mike look at the next picture there was so much promise for the 1999 season with this guy vinnie testaverde the same exact thing now the year before they almost went to the super bowl they almost went to the super bowl they were 15, 10 minutes away from going to the super bowl with bill parcells as the coach and this guy is the quarterback the next season with all the promise and all the world that the new york jets never have opening a season this guy hurts his Achilles and his season is finished. I was there. We couldn't believe it. I, I think he made it to the second quarter. The New York Jets, I mean, if you believe in curses, fuck. And then it's like the Jets aren't getting the message. Last night, if you go to the next slide, Mike, they bring out Vinny Testaverde <laughs> to do the coin toss as if they're asking for it. Don't bring that guy in. He's bad luck. Oh, I just still can't believe it. I think that's all the slides I have. I can't. We're we're all sitting at this bar. Everybody, I've never been to a bar. Well, first of all, the Jets haven't been on Monday Night Football in, I don't know, 20 years. <laughs> and I was never at a, you know, I go every Monday night to have chicken wings and and have beer, and I've never been at a place where it's all full of Jets fans. It's just not a thing. It's either every other team in the U.S. or Giants. And there's never, there's no Jets bars. That's why I hate the fact that there's two teams or three teams in our thing. You know, it's more fun with where Marcy lives. Well, actually, she lives in Kentucky, so I don't even know. But, I mean, at least everybody there is rooting for mm -hmm. Cincinnati and the Bengals. I like when you have one team to root for. Like, that's my niece is up in Boston. and She loves that everyone is a Red Sox fan or a Celtics, you know, or whatever. It's it's so great. But here, you know, you got to pick and choose. There's no Jets bars in New York City. There's no Devils bars in New Jersey. It's a very strange place to live. We care, but secretly we don't care. I mean, I don't even know if there's any Yankees bars except across the street from Yankee Stadium. Ironically, though, here in Manhattan, there are Red Sox bars. <laughs> there are uh, Buffalo Bills bars. There's a whole bunch of Buffalo Bills bars. There's a whole bunch of bars for people from out of town. I know, actually, there's an LSU bar on 34th Street and uh, 7th Avenue by Penn, right under Penn Station. This just doesn't make any sense. Oh, like Scruffy says, Sam Morell posted something like, worst thing to happen to Jets in New York since 9-11. That's good. <laughs> right. Oh, I got to call him. Um, Jesus Christ. Hi, Jules. Uh, and Testaverde's from Long Island, Jules. This is your fault, too. Yep, he was at the game. Um, so I've never, if the bar was hopping, I mean, Mike, I've never seen – I go to this bar every Monday for the past three years, and 
the guy, Tommy, was on the microphone and everybody's quiet. He's listening. They bring up a girl in a Buffalo Bill shirt to spin the wheel and you get something. And uh, he's got the mic. People are going crazy. And uh, she spins free drinks, free shots for everyone at the bar. So everybody's excited. He's like, let's go Jets. I never hear that anywhere. I'm, I'm a lone Jets fan. You know, there's like three guys I can call. <laughs> and Judy. And I don't even think she cares. <laughs> and my cousin Elliot is dead. And he was the only one I could pretty much call. And uh, everyone else is a Giants fan. Nobody else cares. Just like being a Mets fan, you know. And uh, it was just so everybody's doing the Jets chant, J-E-T-S. <laughs> and then <laughs> the fourth play. He's done. Yeah. Gonna hurt a pin drop in that stadium. Even the Buffalo Bills got thrown off. You'd think they'd be like, hey, we took him out. But they got confused, really <laughs> confused. They weren't even able to pick it up again. That whole situation confused the entire NFL. Uh, if you watch the Manning cast with Peyton Manning, which are, by the way, our guest auditioned for, if you get to see it, uh, uh, <laughs> she, she auditioned for the Man Mike, did you see that? No, uh, we'll show it later after she leaves. Uh, it's great. They have auditions for the Manning cast for a third person. And she's one of the people that audition. Uh, and it's great. And uh, even on the Manning cast, Peyton is just sitting there. He goes, all I've prepared is for Aaron Rodgers. I did all this background stuff. I have all this preparation for Aaron Rodgers. I didn't, I mean, nobody was expecting this to happen. Nobody. And the funny thing is, is if you've been listening to my podcast, on a weekly basis. This is like, it's almost like the Donald Trump thing again, where I kept saying he's going to win. He's going to win by a landslide. Nobody believed me. And um, on my pocket, I said, this is so beautiful. I can't believe it. And, you know, we can just enjoy this until September 11th when the Jets find a way to blow it. And Aaron Rodgers hurts himself in the opening play. I mean, I said exactly that. Because if you're a true Jets fan, you can only think the worst is going to happen because it really always does. It's really hmm. unbelievable. I don't know how to handle it. I can't process it. And it's not just me. Everyone's excited about it. My sister was excited after watching Hard Knocks. Everyone was excited to see what he was going to do. Now, like I said in the podcast, all that stuff he did in New York, going to shows, going to Taylor Swift, going to Rangers and Knicks games, now he all looks stupid that he should have been strengthening his leg or something instead of doing that. And that's what sucks the most. <sighs> Mike, what am I going to do? I don't know. I have very little in my life. And the only thing I was hoping for, and I was going to be, I was going to watch every Jets game. I was all in. I mean, I, and, and unfortunately, Zach Wilson is not good. And uh, yeah, Jules, we need a group there. Well, you know, the Jets used to have group, uh, Jets Remedy. I remember what it was called. It was on the fan, on the radio. Jets Rehab, it was called, after every game. I mean, that's when you know a team stinks. It was, you know, like they had 18 weeks of Jets Rehab. <laughs> you know, like they planned it in, in August. Hey, you know what we should do? A show called Jets Rehab. <laughs> oh, it's bad. Anyway, I don't suppose our guest is here, is she? Not yet. Okay. Oh, maybe I should turn on my uh, phone, see if she's coming and then we'll get down to business here um now i guess everything's cool but uh oh so you know what we could do mike is uh show the um uh from last week the top five show oh, what yeah. we uh did do you want to you got one second yeah don't worry about yeah. it oh by the way no 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 <laughs> So just show the, uh, the picture. So, as you can see, I suck. Mike suck. Uh, you guys suck. And Nick is amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus Christ, Mike. I mean, Kansas City losing. Maybe they wouldn't cover, but losing. That's messed up. Marcy's Bengals shitting the bed. Almost as bad as the Giants. Nothing was as bad as the Giants. 
Chargers, Dolphins, that could have gone either way. That was back and forth. Great game. I just didn't want the Dolphins to win, even though I don't hate the Dolphins, but, you know, just because the Jets are going to need wins. And then that Giants game, you got to be kidding me. 40 to nothing? Mike, did you watch that? No, I just saw the score, and I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> Whole, and, and it, you know, quite frankly, the score doesn't even – it doesn't even – tell you the story it's like it should have been worse and then of course i can't believe i won on the jets this is opposite day <laughs> i mean the only one i won is the jets and they probably should have lost that game but their defense is awesome so uh our guest then, is here okay and then okay so let's just bring her in what are we fooling around for uh ladies and gentlemen uh look who look we have today guest picker sarah silverman everybody Sarah, what? Hi, hello. <laughs> Where's her? Oh, here's her theme music. I look in the mirror. I'm just seeing myself. I'm here. You look terrific. We're playing your theme. <laughs> Going all the way back to 1981. Here's Starship with Sarah. <laughs> what happened to those guys? Oh, well, they're big stars. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, the funny thing about Starship is, like, they really made it. They took everything they had and they went the distance, you know. It started in the 60s, the Jefferson Airplane, then changed to Jefferson Starship, had a couple of hits, then just changed to Starship. I mean, and Great Slick there the whole time. Even did the theme to Mannequin. You gotta really? respect it. <laughs> Nothing's gonna stop us. Isn't that her? I think it is. And if the world runs out of love, <laughs> that's the thing. We'll to- still have each other. Yeah. Oh, mannequin, the movie, mannequin. I'm thinking of manimal, which is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mannequin. Yeah, movies, the song still works with manimal. It looks like it was made for seven dollars. <laughs> like, it's really hard to make uh James Spader look, you know. I mean, he was funny in it, but it was like it looked like a sketch. But you know what's awesome is the fact that clearly Andrew McCarthy said, I want James Spader to be in this. Yeah. You know? So he's like, I want my friend. And did you see, and I stopped watching it after about the fourth or fifth season, but the end of the blacklist. Um, oh. So Andrew McCarthy has been directing a bunch of blacklists, which makes me nothing but happy, right? That those guys love each other. And so apparently they never showed the pilot that he has a, a pilot, a special pilot, you know, like his own plane, James Spader, the character. And it turns out at the end of the series, Andrew McCarthy is the pilot. So don't but you is love he it? himself? I don't know. I don't <laughs> No, I don't think so. Cause that would be too weird. <laughs> well, all I know is Jeff Ross once did a gig in Catalina and he took a helicopter to Catalina Island and the helicopter driver was Lorenzo Lamas. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> That would scare the hell out of me. <laughs> like, uh, wait a minute, aren't you Lorenzo Lamas? <laughs> wait, who's the guy who's in Greece? Lorenzo Lamas. Oh shit, that's that is the guy. <laughs> that's oh yeah. So you're telling me the guy who um was he in Greece? Olivia Newton John was using to make John Travolta jealous was flying that helicopter. I don't know whether I would have taken that ride. <laughs> oh, well, that's so Anyway, we don't want to keep you very long. Um, thank you so much for doing this. I am so excited. I think you did very good in the pool this week. Oh, yeah, there he is. See? <laughs> oh, my God. Right hey, I'm going to be your helicopter pilot. I used to play basketball in that. Um, that The exterior of Rydell High is this high school Marshall High out here in Los Angeles. We used to jump the fence on Saturdays and play basketball. Yeah, do you know my friend Bethel? Bethel Karam, she um, goes out with a guy in the pool. Uh, Neil Potter is fish hook, and friends. They're all friends with Lenny Marcus. So she was in uh, Supermarket Sweep and stuff. She went to that high school, like for legit. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah, because she told me she goes, yeah, they, uh, you know, the carnival and everything is. That's the high school I went to. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty. I don't. Well, maybe she was there at that. No, she'd be too young to be there when it was actually filming, but. Oh, Marcy says Andrew McCarthy's kind of ashamed of that movie, except he appreciates the cult following. 
I read his memoir. Well, that makes sense. Still, though, you can forgive anything that took place in the 80s. It just seems like it was the 80s. You just use that as the excuse. I based my entire life on that. What do you want? I grew up in the 80s. Hey, that's why I'm a mess. <laughs> All right. I'm going to share my screen. And then we're going to make five picks. And I'm so happy you were. How about that this. Jets game? I mean. Oh, I've, my God. We were just talking about it. I'm sharing my. I know you love the Jets. But, but, Every time, you know, when to, for the audience, like the audience, your audience probably knows this, but all of his emails are in green during football season and his right. there's always go Jets. And, you know, I don't care. But then Rory started, started what? Excuse me. <laughs> I kind of half burped. Rory started <laughs> watching that, that show uh, on ESPN. Oh, a Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks, yeah. And like we're watching it, and it's so good. And then now here it is, the first game, and he's out. We're like, I mean, we couldn't believe it. But then to watch them like become a team in that at, moment, really. I was at, yeah. And when I, he, the guy caught um, number number three, caught the that one hand that where he you know, got it to himself and tapped it and scored the touchdown. Oh my, there Wilson, was, Wilson. Yeah. yeah There's there was a lot to enjoy from yesterday even though the tragic ending the tragic ending the tragicness of aaron Rodgers, but of course but, off but it's like it's like they got him to train with them and to make them the best they can be and he took them all the way there and then it's awful for him it's so sad but it's exciting for the jets that it's like they won you know that was great but Sarah, for me being a jets fan and i mean hard knocks was so amazing this year did did you I, i've been playing it on my podcast did you see the second episode where they're like if you want to be a serious new york jet you need to familiarize yourself with leslie nielsen now we're going to be talking about him a lot and then they were showing you have to be familiar with airplane and the guy was so serious did you see that scene no oh my god it was so great and then aaron rod they have Ryan rod like hey did you see that scene where the guy's wearing the microphone when he's peeing oh my god that was hilarious and then they talk about the next episode they were talking about like we're not calling our place where we're in the 20 the red zone we're calling it the gold zone because of gold member and how great that movie is and this is what they do and then in the fourth episode they're all talking about how great the Back to the Future musical is. And there's, oh my God. there's one guy on the team that took them to all the musicals. And then in the last one, they show them going to the MJ musical, like Aaron Rodgers. The whole team was there. And it was so cute. And you're just like, oh my God, I love this team. And for this to happen. <laughs> it's just crazy. Like, is Aaron Rodgers ever going to play again? I don't know. It's I think he, I think he will. I feel like he has something to prove, but I don't know. Uh, all right, Mike, let me, I shared the screen before. Oh, was, what is Right, I forgot about the uh, the big uh, title card I put up there. <laughs> We're trying so much to graphics and stuff. Well, I'm trying to make it more entertaining for everybody. All right, Mike. Now I am sharing the screen again. You can see this, Sarah. Yeah. All right. Let's begin on Thursday. The matchup between the Eagles and the Vikings. The Eagles minus seven. I am going to take the Eagles Minnesota look awful last week of course that can all change but the eagles at home i'll take a touchdown um sarah you want to go next uh i make them how did well how, how did the vikings do this week they, they didn't do well at all it was really bad it was disappointing they lost to the tampa bay buccaneers and the bucks are you know kind of like the a weird place because they they don't have tom brady anymore so they're a mess like like the jets will be but they ended up winning. It's confusing. Yeah. Uh, I'll take the Eagles as well. Probably smart. Mike? I'm going to go Eagles and the chat saying Eagles as well. All right. 
We're all going Eagles. That didn't work out for us last year week with the Chiefs. But <laughs> then we go to Sunday. We got the Cincinnati Bengals against the Baltimore Ravens. I have no issues taking the Ravens plus three and a half. I'm sorry, Marcy. I'm not saying the Bengals can't win, but uh, I think the Baltimore always covers those small spreads in their division. Mike, you want to go next? Uh, I'll go Bengals. Just to be different. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> uh. Of the Ravens. I think it's the right thing to do. Although you know, when it's a home team, I do. I'm but a... you're just taking you're taking the Ravens to cover the spread. Like that, maybe they'll lose by three. Yeah, then you're good. Uh, what's everybody saying, Mike, in the chat? They're going Bengals overall. They're going Bengals, of course, for yeah. Marcy's sake. Then you know, I pick these teams that look kind of interesting. The Lions can't. They beat the Chiefs. The Seahawks were horrible last week. Lost to the Rams, and the Lions are covered by lions. five and a half I'm lions yeah i think i'm gonna do that too i think i've always hated that guy geno smith because he used to be a jet and he was horrible and uh he had a great season last year in seattle sarah but do you remember this guy he um when he was with the jets he went to go play the chargers when he was a rookie and he went to go see that movie gone girl uh with ben affleck right isn't that the one and uh right and he didn't understand how the time change worked in California, so he missed practice. And I am not betting on somebody that stupid. <laughs> so I'm going to take the Lions to cover as well, Mike. I'm going to say the Lions. <laughs> I uh, even he though had, they're in he had one good season, and that's it for him. What's everybody saying here? I see Seattle. Uh, yeah, they're going north Seattle, it seems. Good. I like. Oh, well, I have to go Seattle. Oh. Okay. I have to change mine because um, that's Tall John's team. I forgot. Okay. I will accept that as an answer. I will remember that pick. Why is that Tall John's team? He's not from there, is he? I don't know. He just, he loves them. It's like he his, just chose his, them as the team. I can understand that. I, believe me, I wish I could choose any other team besides the Jets. I just can't help myself. I keep coming back to them. I I wish I, I had a... Last night, the Jets became America's team. <laughs> well, was... Yeah, last night. I think they did. I think you're right. In a, at least for, well, later, as you see, they're playing America's team next week. So why don't we go to that one right now? Let's just go Jets and Cowboys. Cowboys are favored by a lot. Why shouldn't they be to beat the Giants by 40 points? Um, I'm taking the backdoor cover, Jets. I have to. I have to have hope. Uh, Sarah, what do you think? I'm going to take Jets because they just hey. after last night. I can't not root for them. I know. So it's uh, America's team playing America's new team. Maybe there'll be a shift. Uh, I don't know. Mike, what do you think? Mike's in Texas right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Cowboys. Yeah, you son of a... you. And what is the chat room saying? They're going Jets. They're going They're Jets. Jets all the way. Like it. Jets. And then finally, the Kansas City Chief against the Jaguars. Uh, Kansas City's mi minus three. I'm going to stick with the Jaguars. I like them. Sarah, what do you think? Come back to me. Okay, Mike. Ooh, I'm going to go with the Jaguars. Yeah, I like them plus three. I like them plus three at home. And they're I home. I'll take Jaguars, too. I mean, Kansas City, you figure they're going to come back after the loss, but I, I think like Tony Khan's trying to concentrate on them. <laughs> And uh, what's the chat room? I see a lot of Jags. Uh, right now they're tied, actually. All right, then we'll make it different. We'll pick the Chiefs for them. Uh, Jags. To go Jags actually. Oh, it's Jets? Yeah, but do it different. Might as well. All right, we'll just keep it that way. And that is the top five for this week. Hey, now, with our guest picker, Sarah Silverman. Easy boy, Jess Gow. <laughs> Are you, um, I know, you know, there's a writer's strike going on, so that's why I asked you to. Yeah, like, Judy's here. Yes, she is. <laughs> she loves you, of course. And uh, I know that there's a strike, but um, are you performing anywhere? Like just comedy? Can you, you can still do stand up comedy, right? Thank God. Yeah, I'm doing stand up and a whole lot of nothing. I should <laughs> probably be doing something more productive. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to come back to my podcast soon in October, by the end of October latest yeah that's why i got lucky she usually tapes it on tuesdays i'm like all right i know you're not doing that podcast come on for five minutes so uh thank you so much for coming on today 
I really yeah. appreciate it. I mean, everybody loves you here and you know, so Dave, I'm a I'm a pretty big celebrity. Um, some people <laughs> might even dare to call me an icon. I'm very busy. And I found time for you because to me, I think, you know, charity begins at home. <laughs> oh, it's like I always do for my niece that Martin Short, when he was playing Captain Hook, but he was doing a David Steinberg playing Captain Hook. <laughs> And he's talking to, you know, it's Wendy Michael John, but he only concentrates on John. And he goes, but to me, John, I feel <laughs> like I've been talk talking like that for years. My niece is even like, but John. <laughs> anyway, Sarah, thank you so much. And I will uh, talk to you this uh, week. Yeah, I'll see you soon. And uh, happy holidays. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I just found out a happy Jewish um... <laughs> that New Year. Yeah, Jewish New Year. Yep. Don't forget to write a 5819 on your check. What is the year? Uh, 5884. 5784. Oh 50, 5784. I, I like 87, all day. The Jewish year is great for Dave because it's still the 80s. Yeah. yeah. What's up? How do I leave here? I don't even know. Just, I press the uh, leave button at the bottom. Leave studio. Uh, Bye, Sarah. Oh, wait, <laughs> Damn, she is fucking good, right? Oh. She's so funny. Well, you know, she's she she you know, Steve 858 saying icon is correct. She actually is an icon. She's making fun of herself, but the fact of the matter is, again, when all is said and done. People are going to remember that she kind of started this women in comedy movement. I mean, I know there's Joan Rivers, but after that, there's Sarah. You know, right, Mike? The the modern one, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, well, listen, for years, and I was in that, you know, I'm not, not, not in it. I'm just saying I was, you know, growing up when it was happening, women aren't funny. That's all anybody ever said. And somehow Sarah proved them all wrong. And then the other girls like Chelsea Handler and Amy Schumer and stuff came after her because they were like, well, maybe a pretty girl can be funny. I mean, Sarah just, you know, we've known each other for a long time. I've known her since she was 18. And again, when she told me she was going to leave college and start comedy, I obviously said she was making a very big mistake. <laughs> As I, uh, Same thing I said to the Blue Man group when they told me what they wanted to do. But uh you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> She's got balls to the walls and uh, she still does, you know, it just doesn't end. Like, what advice have you given me? <laughs> you, uh, I would stay in Texas if I were you. I wouldn't. Uh, I mean. <laughs> well, it's funny if I told you to stay, Mike, stay in Texas, it's not going to work out for you. And then all of a sudden Texas becomes the booming comedy place that it is and it all works out, you know. <laughs> Mike, I would stay in Texas. I wouldn't come back to the city if I were you. And then like, Dave, well, it like the opposite is what works. But, but I'm saying it was like I was giving you advice to get out of comedy by saying stay in Texas. And then it turns out you're like, Dave, thank you so much for your advice. Texas is amazing for comedy. You know, and then it, it all works out. I'm wrong about everything. Although when I see talent, I know it kind of. I mean, I certainly knew it with the tell and I knew it with Sarah. All right, that I didn't see the Blue Man Group coming. I'm sorry again. I, you know, you have a guy come tell you what they want to do. You know, if you if you pitch the Blue Man Group to somebody, I dare you to have the insight to just be like, dude, that sounds amazing. It, in fact, it reminds me of watching Boogie Nights, and uh, they're in the hot tub together, and they're like, yeah, I'm working on music, and he's singing the lyrics to him. He's like, yeah, my honey tree, and I could be your bee, and. Marky Mark is like, uh, dude, those lyrics are amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking about doing something with my music. Uh, that's what it's like. Somebody's telling you, no, we dress up in blue. What's the script? Well, there's no words. Well, what do you do? Yeah, we had a bunch of garbage. <laughs> yeah. We throw marshmallows at each other and you know, just kind of catch them in our mouth. Well, how long is the show? Like five minutes? No, it's like 90 minutes. <laughs> it feels way longer. Yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, that was super fun, right? That was great. All right, so let's keep it going. Let's uh, do the small slide presentation we have today.
on my that that last slide is always going to work for me. <laughs> That's the <laughs> greatest one. <laughs> Uh, at least for the time being, it's going to work every time. All right, let's see. I'm sharing my screen right now. All right. With our first slide, this is the Secretary of State coming out of a McDonald's in the Ukraine. <laughs> uh-huh. I can't believe they have a McDonald's still open that hasn't been bombed or whatever. And he's coming. You can see he's carrying fries. You see that? <laughs> uh I think I'm in love with that guy. <laughs> What's his name? Bl- Blinken. And there's uh, Winkin and Nod. What? Hey! <laughs> I love that the Secretary of State is in the Ukraine showing our support and just going like, Let's stop at that McDonald's. Stop the car. Like in the American president when he wants to get flowers. <laughs> this is my favorite picture, I think. Uh, this is the German Chancellor, Olaf Scholz. Scholz. Now, this whole picture looks suspicious. It looks like he's giving a Ukrainian kind of speech. We have to get the Americans again, finish what Hitler was doing. (laughs) That's what it looks like. But he's actually just speaking at an auto show. And it looks like somebody attacked him, but it turns out he only fell while he was jogging. So the picture is so wrong for so many reasons. Guys, paper airplanes are no joke. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> exactly you know somebody could put out an eye with that thing when in mcrome nice one a week late this of course one of my favorite pictures the, the uh, pictures the mass exodus from burning man <laughs> all the losers that <laughs> got flooded out at that stupid burning man what i can't figure out is why they're all in a straight line why not uh there's all this room over here you know <laughs> like Fuck the, there's, you know, when you have these guys like sitting here, this is the line. They're, they're not cops. That I always used to do that at the Jets game and never listen to the security. I'm like, you're not cops. Fuck you. Go outside the lines. That's Burning Man, man. That's fucking rock and roll. Look at all these RVs. You got to be kidding me. They all flood. They were like, we got to get out of here. <laughs> Losers. This is a little thing called a really annoying Dave Jessica thing called back to Hogwarts day. It's always on September 1st. Ugh. And of course this guy's dressed like Dobby because Dobby hates King's crossing. Dobby loves Harry Potter. Um, they go to King's crossing, which is the train station or King's Cro- King's crossing which is the train station in Harry Potter where they catch the train to go to school. So now make everyone, everyone late to work. Say again? And right. make everyone late to work. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> so all these kids are trying to like get back. It's because that's the day the train takes them to Hogwarts. And right, it's just annoying everyone else. There obviously is no platform nine and a half. So you're just making everybody late to work. Exactly my point, Mike. Oh, my God. But Dobby love work. Dobby love Harry Potter. Dobby cannot have Harry Potter go back to Hogwarts. I've been trying to do Creature the other day. Like, <laughs> I don't know why. That guy Creature freaks me out. Nine and three quarters. That's right. What did I say? Nine and a half? Right. Well, neither one exists. <laughs> Are you talking about track nine and three quarters? I believe it's down the way. Nine and three quarters. I like when... British people say nine and three quarters. I remember I went to camp with these two British guys, and they're like, why do you suppose we'd need three quarters of an hour to prepare for lunch? It definitely said 45 minutes, but they said, why do you suppose we need three quarters of an hour to prepare for lunch? They were nine. Who talks like that? All right. This is going to bother some people. This is, uh, I don't know, Ava Dernuvi. She's a director. She's at the Venice Film Festival, which is going on right now. I don't know whether you heard, but the person who is the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, darling of the Venice Film Festivals this year. Mike, do you know who it is? I do not. It's this guy. Oh, wow. It's Woody Allen. They worship his new movie, which we can't see here, called Coupe de Chance. It's all in French with French actors and French subtitles. He was like, you don't want me here? I'll go over there. And apparently this is supposed to be an unbelievable film. 
like match point was or crimes and misdemeanors and no American will take it. And it just pisses the fuck out of me off. There's this isn't like Cosby. There's no proof of anything. And they have just punched him in the face. Sarah and I talk about this all the time. We're not sure how to handle it. You don't want to be disrespectful to anybody and anybody's feelings, but it's just not fair to treat him this way. Of course, you know, what are you going to do? You marry your stepdaughter is what you get. But I want to see this goddamn movie and I still worship him. And here's the best part, which I didn't even know. This is him and his wife, you know, who he's been married to for like 35 years and his kids. (laughs) I never seen them before. I forgot about them. Isn't that crazy? So, you know, I have this place where I can usually see I, the last two movies weren't distributed really, and I saw them and they were horrible. But this is supposed to be really good. And um, yeah, yeah, Scruffy, you're right. Uh, him and Polanski both got a little, a little, a small group of protesters were yelling, but they were yelling in French. Uh, or no, where's Venice? Um, Italy? Sure. Yes. They were yelling in Italian, so he didn't even notice. Um, but, uh, it's just so weird. I, I just didn't know he had daughter, but it seems like they completely support him and their mom. So she's beginning to look a little like Yoko. It's bothering me a little bit, but, uh, let's let that go. Uh, this is the West Indian day parade in Brooklyn, which was, uh, a, a week or so ago. And, uh, the reason why I have no issues with this parade, does anybody know? And here's another picture of it. As you can see, they're going past some homeless guy in a shopping cart. Um, You don't want to be canceled. What? (laughs) You don't want to be canceled. (laughs) uh, (laughs) The reason why I like this parade is because it's in Brooklyn. (laughs) Not Manhattan. (laughs) Have a good time. Your fucking parade. Bring them all over there, you fucking (laughs) jerk-offs. Well, maybe not say it like that. (laughs) I don't care. (laughs) <laughs> Bring all the parades over there. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. I don't mean the individuals. I'm sure they're lovely people. But bring your parades, your stupid fucking parades. Bring them all to Brooklyn, Staten Island, Queens. I don't care as long as it's not Manhattan. Yeah, Scruffy, uh, I knew what you were going to say. Yeah. Well, so you can't say New York City because that's New York. You have to say the different boroughs. Right. Meanwhile, Staten Island wants to secede anyway. They want to be their own city. They don't want to be considered part of New York City anymore. And I think they have a point. Um, This was the European Masters in Switzerland. And this is the 18th hole. And (laughs) is this fun watching golf? Well, I guess the 18th hole, maybe. Uh, I just feel like that roof is totally going to cave in. It really doesn't look like it's built very sturdily, sturdily, sturdy. (laughs) And, uh, I don't know. It just looks stupid in a bad time. You know, I hate this. Oh, this was part of the West Indian Festival. (laughs) (laughs) This is Coco Goff. That is not her, you know, falling or crying. It is her happy because it was very exciting last Saturday. I watched the whole thing (laughs) and her at a 19 year old to win the U.S. Open champion. She's way cool. There she is just crying because she can't even believe it. She can't hold her emotions back. I thought the picture was her making fun of Aaron Rodgers. Oh, I didn't even think about that. (laughs) That's what I thought Aaron Rodgers was doing. I'm like, oh, he's doing a Coco. Oh, no, it's worse. I like Coco. I think she's kind of cool and pretty. I never really liked the Williams sisters. They didn't do it for me. I like Coco. She's really cool. See her dad. He can't be in the stadium. Like he's got like she had to go all the way up. I don't know if you watched to find him. The security Aww. took her to where he has because he's like got to walk around. He can't handle it. And then he didn't even want to see her because he was going to cry. I started crying because I just thinking about it. when I see those scenes where they're hugging the parents, I go crazy. Uh, but that's the real Coco is, uh, of course, um, from the movie. She's about to take off her top and then cry, which is legendary. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of crying, <laughs> see, this Coco is crying, but this Coco is going to cry. For another reason. (laughs) Oh, the late Irene Cara. She was pretty. This is one of those things, you know, I fucking am terrified of. It's like a 60 foot. It's called Zuzu Bra. It's in Santa Fe. They burn it every year to alleviate the sorrow of the people that live in Santa Fe. 
<laughs> so bad to live there. That's right. But it's what look at I mean, if you could see, I don't know, you could see the tiny people here. You look how big this thing. It's a marionette. Oh wow. Yeah. These are the people. This photo thing isn't skewered or anything. It's like no, no, no. I didn't know it was big. I didn't know it was a marionette, though. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is kind of cool. I like it. And they burn it. Yeah. They burn it every year. <laughs> they put all that work into making a movable marionette, and then they just burn it. And <laughs> Again, there's so many wildfires and so many things. You better be burning that correctly, man. Is it really necessary to burn anything to start a fire on purpose anymore? Is that yeah. smart in the desert anymore? Well, it's in the desert. I mean, it's not in the forest. <laughs> so. I don't know, Mike. These things are spreading like wildfires. I mean, they're really they're they're crazy. Uh, Marcy, are you doing an REM song? Are you making a a joke? Instead of shiny happy people, are you doing tiny happy people? Because that's very funny. I like that. Now, these little girls, they're dressing up as the Hindu goddess Kali. It's a festival in Mumbai. But I think they painted their tongues. That doesn't seem like a good... Oh, nice one, Marcy. You were... What were you saying, Mike? Not paint. It's like like when you drink Kool-Aid. Well, I hope it's uh, not the paint that they have on their foreheads. No, <laughs> but it it does look pretty cool. It I does. mean, it's really good makeup. It looks like fun. Yeah, <laughs> those those uh, pom poms supposed to uh, like they don't have the other one with skulls that Kali has, but uh, really, Kali has skulls. Yeah, she has like separate little heads on her. Oh, husband. well, I'm glad they did it this way. I like it better. This is more wholesome, and the girls look pretty, and um, I like it. Kelly's a cool goddess. Yeah. Hey, she's okay. This is a water rugby in Switzerland, and I just love this photo, not just because you can see the guy's taint, but um, I love this little uh, this one where he's like, so what's going on? I just got you. I just got back. <laughs> I don't know. He reminds me of that duck in Babe. So what's been happening since I've been gone? <laughs> and then he sees <laughs> the pig being with the bottle. <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> and he just looks like he peeked up and he's like, what the? Ah! <laughs> so that's all for that. This is uh, the World Tango Championship in Buenos Aires. And uh, that looks now see that. I don't know if there's a whole bunch of people there, but if there's not, that seems like fun. That seems like people dressed up nice and that that's a show. That, you know, instead of a parade where you're just walking around, that's something that could be interesting. Thank you. <laughs> so, my, can you see my the pictures on the bottom here? Yeah. Why is that? I've never I seen don't that know. before. It does it sometimes. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it either. It's annoying. It doesn't on my computer, too. Anyway... Uh, so these guys, uh, they're in Bulgaria, pulling a car from Bulgaria. The one, I guess they had a lot of flooding. Um, I don't know how they attached that thing, <laughs> whatever it is and where it's attached. I mean, they obviously had to go underwater and do that. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. But if they're in Bulgaria, then you know who, you know, travels to Bulgaria is this car <laughs> that was, uh, you know, stuck in the water in Bulgaria as well. And why these guys are using this instead of using the clearly flotation device that's equipped on most cars in Bulgaria, then, you know, you're just not using your head. Obviously. Oh. Can you believe it? The Rolling Stones have a new album out, a new fucking album, the first time in 18 years. <laughs> I just heard the song today. It's called Angry. And although maybe it's not their best work, the video is really good. And a lot of it's fun. It's not traditional stone stuff, maybe, but you got to love that they're making a new album. I I think that's cool. It's called Hackney Diamonds. I love it. What about you, Mike? I haven't listened to anything they put out since. <laughs> I think some of their Before new albums born. have been good. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I think they try. I, it just never never comes up on anything. So, yeah. 
Oh, from Scruff. Is, is it Nick? Nick, you mean on the on the right as a uh, Griffin? Uh, uh, yeah, Nick Griffin. Um, <laughs> as Keith. As Keith, right? That's Ron Wood and Keith and me. Um, yeah, I can see that as Nick. <laughs> That's good. You're right. And finally, I just had this picture. I took this during the U.S. Open. That's Kevin Garnett, but. I thought for a second this was Derek Jeter, but I don't think it is. That's, right? Is that Kevin Garnett? That's Kevin Garnett. Are you are you sure? I yeah, I was pretty sure. I don't think and that's why I thought that. maybe this was Derek Jeter, but it's clearly not. But this is Kevin Garnett. But wouldn't this be funny if this was Derek Jeter? Because he looks good for an older guy. But <laughs> it's not. That's why I took the picture. I'm like, wait, is that Kevin Garnett with Derek Jeter? And here's outside Steve. So I just assumed. I'm kidding. <laughs> and then like you. outside Steve. Thank you so much. I'm stopping sharing. Um, oh, I didn't have to I tell you. I think that was Kevin Garnett. Um, it, no, it was. I, I looked that one I looked up after. Like I put in Kevin Garnett at the US Open to make sure it was him. Oh, maybe. Who do you think it was? Am I being racist? Uh, no, I, I, I mean, it's, uh, I can't remember his name. The guy who played for the Thunder for a while. Um, he was from UT. I can't West, remember his name now. West, West, not Westbrook, the other guy, the one who left. He went to play for the Nets. Kyrie Irving? No. Anyway. Well, Kevin Garnett played for the Nets. Kevin Durant. Yes. That's Kevin what I Durant. meant. Sorry. That's what I thought, yeah, because I couldn't get it in my head either, but I knew it right. wasn't Kevin Garnett. Kevin Durant, <laughs> right. I had Kevin Garnett. Garnett, Garnett played for the Celtics. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Durant is exactly and... who I meant, and I apologize that that was that what Jeter complaining about not old timers day, just former play. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they play a game anymore. Uh, that's what I heard. That's a bummer. That was the fun of old timers day. Speaking of outside, Steve, he's behind. He should be right behind me. But um, ah, Kali. Yeah. Wait the. Wait a minute. Those aren't... Isn't that the Marx Brothers? Is that the Sgt. <laughs> Pepper's album? <laughs> but that's uh, not for real, is it? That's a... To, that's, that's for the real? Goddess. That's the goddess Kali. All the but red's like with blood. those actual heads around, that's what it's supposed to be? Yeah. I think that's supposed to be the big one. It's supposed to be the head of her husband, I think. Oh, I thought... I don't know enough about it. I thought it, it was a like a joke drawing. I thought it I thought it was like they were doing a Sgt. Pepper's thing or something. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. Kali's I like... I am racist. Pretty badass. Yeah, what are you gonna do, I'm an old man? So I've seen all the kids dressed as her was pretty Meanwhile, funny. I, actually. Yeah, I, man, that's, that's probably not good to be a man over there. Then that day, um, are you a man? Yes. Remember that, I think Kirstie Alley was doing that in a Cheers episode. She hated men. She's like, "Are you a man?" Yes. And then she threw a drink in their face. It's pretty funny. Anyway, you know where I got this coffee today across the street? A um, the bag of coffee. I was talking to the girl there, and I said, you know, you should come on the show. Because uh, <laughs> I don't know why. So I'm like, well, you're hot enough to uh, fulfill the hot girl quota uh, that we use over there. And uh, <laughs> as I told her about the show, I said, you got to watch. Cool. And, you know, we like to mix it up. We like to have the, the girls, the pretty girls, and then um, comedians. All right. But unfortunately... We are not going to be back in studio until October. So we are set here in our ways, which I do not mind anymore now that we have the music and the background and everything. It seems like a much more festive show. Plus, uh, that means we can get guest pickers every week for our football. Take that as a no. Uh, uh, it was drowning, the, the music was drowning us out for, for a second. Oh, I see. But that's all right. Um, so Mike is going to do a storytelling show right now. Where? Uh, the Texas Public, Public Radio in San Antonio. It's for a podcast. It's not like oh, oh, it's not live. It's it no. I mean, there's a live audience, but it's not. No, no. I thought maybe we could hear it on Texas Public Radio. So on their podcast, yeah. Oh, that's why Marcy was saying where just guys voice go. Yes, the music was drowning us out, but we're back. Or am I not? We're back. Oh. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh. We'll be back virtual again next week with uh, another beautiful guest to make picks with, which has been super fun to mix it up. 
but uh, as you know, we're using Nick for the season. Oh, let me show up that um, that picture for the season, Mike. Uh, if you have it, the uh, the big chart, because we are picking everything. The one that I know, I forgot. Had to, right before she came up. Yeah, yeah, the the other one, not the five, like all of the games. I had oh, two oh, pictures. Awesome. I can't remember what I called them. I think I called it the players. Yeah, no, that's the PowerPoint one. Um, I didn't know. No, 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 no. There's a picture, another picture. No, it should be a JPEG. Of the standings? I only have the top five. And then a week two PowerPoint. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I don't have the whole thing. I just have. Oh, wait. Maybe I. The other one you sent me has a PowerPoint. I said, oh, I sent you the PowerPoint. Oh, I sent you the wrong thing. Yeah, I guess that's not the right one. Oh, well, we'll look at it next week. But we're picking every week, me, Mike, Nick, and Marcy. And we'll see who wins at the end. And we also keep Sweet. traps of the... Uh, what? Sweet. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. Uh, so that'll be fun. And I'm glad we're just doing five because you don't want to have a guest like Sarah Silva and waste time with uh, you know a whole bunch of picking. But it was so nice of her to come on right for like 10 minutes. It was beautiful. And then you can really truly tell, just come on for like 10 minutes. And then you, maybe you can get uh, you can get the big stars get the big stars you know she's in a brand yeah. new movie coming out with uh, bradley cooper called maestro playing um i think leonard bernstein's sister and uh that should be interesting getting a lot of good press so you can look forward to that from what i've been told her show stupid petrix is supposed to be on tbs with me playing the uh, head writer as a dog uh <laughs> and uh i don't know that should be fun. Also on uh, uh, Billy Joel this week, uh, we have the Nylon Curtain album wrap up, part one of three. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. I don't have any stand up gigs coming up because it is the high holidays. So if you celebrate, which I don't think most of you, I don't think any of you are Jewish except for Aunt Judy and uh, Anonymous, um, then uh, Happy New Year and uh, Lashana Tova. Otherwise, we'll see you all again right here, virtually, at 6 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday, September. I can't think of the date. <laughs> 19. September 19. Right? Yes, sir. Thank you all for coming this week. It's always an excellent time hanging out with everybody. I look forward to it every week. We'll see you next week on the Comedy Seller Nightly Show. Good night, everybody. <laughs> 